and Savior at this hour must begin to question themselves, how much of them is Christ? Are we together? The reason why we need to begin to question ourselves is because of Romans chapter 28, verse, verse um, uh, uh, sorry, Romans chapter 8, verse 29. Let's read it together. For those who have been predestined, Romans 8, 29. For those God foreknew, choir, you may sit down, please. Let those people at the back and let them see the, script, the scripture. Let's read again, one, two, go. You are not reading like disciples. When I read, you hear my voice, isn't it? I was telling the choir. I was in the choir training last Sunday, and I, Saturday, and I will be going to their training until further notice. That they don't need microphone. Remember, anytime you read the Bible, that's how you read it. That's how you read it. My son was listening to one of the philosophers in England who have contested with the, 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 the reality of Christianity. One of those who said Christianity will soon fade away. And while they were interviewing him on BBC, he said when you read the Bible, you read it aloud. He's an agnostic, an atheist rather. But he said, when you read the Bible, you read it aloud. Well, he grew up in the church, and he became an atheist. But my, my son was, was shocked when in an atheist conference, you know, published on BBC, the most respected atheist in the country said, when you read the Bible, which means he does read the Bible. But he said many Christians don't. He asked from some Christians, what is the first book in the Bible? They don't know it. 
He asked them, what is the first book in the New Testament? They didn't know it. He said, look at them, there are four. They don't even know the book of their God. So, beloved, when we read the scriptures, we read it with understanding. When we sing, we sing with understanding. When we pray, we pray with understanding. Anything that does not take your spirit, soul, and body, especially your spirit out through your mind and to your body, is not necessary. It's not, it's not good for God. It is useless for God. We can remain how we are and continue to fellowship, believing that we impress God, but yet be nothing until we die. When you worship, Jesus said you worship in spirit and in truth, and he said, for such the Father seeketh. In other words, anybody who worships in spirit, the God of the spirit will leave a deposit. Then every spiritual thing promised should manifest in you. I want to challenge your faith. You know, if you have been very, very lousy and lazy with God, you've got to sit up because we are going to a strange year. David said, I will not give you a sacrifice that cost me nothing. Isn't it? Come on now, church. Hey, come and answer me. Our first sacrifice is what? Praise. You, pray with, you praise God with the whole of your being. That's what the book of Psalms says. Then it says you play skillfully. That's what it says. Our next praise is prayer. So when you pray, you pray with the whole of your being. Our next praise is the word. When you read the word, you read with the whole of your being. I told you yesterday to do an assignment. I wouldn't ask you now how many of you did it because some will fail. Because you might probably not remember what I told you. But I want to remind you that is not a disciple. The spirit of a disciple, when you are told something, you do it religiously. You know, all these people who are trained by gurus and they are trained by, you know, uh, you know, you know, in the Muslim faith, when your mullah tells you something, you see those people, they, they will do it with all their blood. All right? Afar, Dickens was afar before. When they tell them to read Keu, they will take it like this and be nodding their head and their ear. If you, if we are in the in this in the school and you are you are messing up, they give you a terrible cane. I know that because my grandfather was a chief man. So that before the age of twelve, you want to read the whole Quran off head. And those kids at twelve who could recite it from beginning to the end, they give them a crown. Christians ought to serve their God more than that. Jesus says, unless your religion is far more than the Pharisees. So you have to become a Pharisee when you're serving God and go beyond Pharisee. That is to say that you must have the attitude of the Pharisee, but you must not have the mind of the Pharisee. The mind of the Pharisee is to want to show what they are doing, okay? But the attitude of the Pharisee is very good because they do what they do religiously, 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 without commitment. So in this season, God is challenging you enough of nothingness before God. We have to serve him with all of him so that we can get from him what he promised to give. We will not get it unless we do it in his way. I will together now. So I love that scripture, therefore, that says we are to be conformed with the likeness of Jesus. So which means today what I'm asking you to do is that begin on a daily basis to check yourself. How much of Jesus have you conformed with? How much of Jesus are you doing what you're doing? If Jesus was to be in your shoes and in the things that you are doing, how would Jesus have done it? And the way you know Jesus will have done it, which is very evident in the scripture, is the way you got to do it. The scripture is full of the lifestyle of Jesus Christ, how Jesus related, how he lived, the guiding principles about the life of Christ. It's all in the, in the scriptures. So we keep that in our heart now. We want to begin to measure ourselves. How much of Jesus have I fulfilled today? How much of Jesus Christ have I fulfilled yes, yesterday? And in what I'm doing right now, how much of Jesus am I fulfilling? Now, just a few minutes I wanted to share with you briefly. And then we will bring tonight to a close. 
Yesterday, I'm sure you learned some things. What was it yesterday that God was telling us? Can you move this? What was the theme of yesterday? What was the main theme of yesterday? Yes, come on, let's, let's speak. <laughs> yes, that's all right. Yeah. What was yesterday about? What prayer did we pray through yesterday? Thanksgiving. Praise. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. What scripture was it? What verse? Five to what? To twelve. Yes, of course. One to six. Of course, we prayed twelve to five. Uh, twelve, uh, five to twelve. Twelve. But I wrote in your letter one to six. Now, what God was saying and what He stopped in verse five really is that, well, five and six is that you must meditate on His wonders, isn't it, and His wonderful deeds. And I told you, no man under heaven can operate in supernatural without first being consumed with the wonderful deeds of God. Don't forget what I tell you. Nobody enters into the supernatural if you have not meditated and totally be consumed and totally amazed, aghast, by the supernatural wonders of God in the Scripture. It is, it is the supernatural wonders of God in the Scripture Meditation of that is the entrance of man into the supernatural. Is God wants every Christian to operate the supernatural? Everyone born of God should. The only way is meditating upon the wonders of God. That is what opens the door for you to enter into the field of supernatural. But today, what is the theme of today? Our prayer focus of today. And what book? Psalm what? Psalm one what? Psalm 51. It's, yeah, first John. It is all concentrated on repentance and cleansing. That's the reason why the songs that we led you today is about cleansing. Are we together now? Because there are some attitudes that some of us have, which we... In, we grew up with by the virtue of the environment we lived or parents that brought us up, and those attitudes are contrary to God. Unfortunately, when any of us got born again, we carried it into the church because in, not in many churches, people are taught about what the mind of Christ really is so that believers can begin to acclimatize themselves with the mind of Christ. Some of our attitudes, we inherited it by wrong association, and they look like a norm normal way of life. But those are the things that hinder many believers in their prayer. Those are the things that allow the demons of hell to oppress some Christian. Attitude. And I teach you a lot about attitude in this church. I teach you a lot. It's very costly. But today was a day for you to have dealt with that. As I told you yesterday. That the things I led you through those prayers, the things that I inherited from my parents and attitude, Father, disconnect them from me. Give me a new attitude. Attitude that I formulated and I grew with that is contrary to you. Take it away from me. You know something? The most dangerous Christians should understand is this. God does not look at your face. He looks at your heart. He knows the motive. Remember what David said to his son? Yeah? There is a man who refuse to follow the things I'm saying to you, and you think that your energy and your strength and your brain can achieve things. God knows how to frustrate people like that. He will let you do all what you can, put all your life into it. This minute, he will be disappointed. Until you recognize that it is God of heaven who makes way for man. You don't need to know people for him to make way for you. You may know everybody is in power. They will, they will remember everybody. God will make sure they forget you. Because you have not given glory to he who lives forever and ever by the attitude of your thinking. I will get now. That's the reason why the things I'm teaching you, they are bedrock not only to spiritual success, but to success all around life. All around life. You know, I want all of you to have this in mind. Anybody who is your age group, if they have a success, you should be better than them. Someone say fingers are not equal. Why should you be the short one? That's what I'm asking you. 
Why should you be the short one? Do you, you want me to give you scriptures on what I'm talking about? Look at quickly Deuteronomy 28 verse 12. What did he say? Who told you fingers are not equal? In heaven, they are all equal. Now look at what he says. The Lord will what? Open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the works of your hand. Shall we read the last one? You will what? So a Christian who is always borrower, borrower, borrower in his life, what is it? He, he, because he's living a life of disobedience. A life of disobedience. I've taught you that all throughout the last two weeks. Giving you scriptures. Look at the next verse, 20, verse 13. Let's read together. Read it like disciples. Stop. Read it again. Stop. Read it again. Tell the person beside you, the Lord will make me. So where did you see that you have to be the short finger when fingers are not equal? If fingers are not equal, is it your business? The God who created fingers not to be equal said you are going to be the one in top. That's what he told you. Anybody born again, they remove you from, what do you call this, index finger or whatever, small finger, little finger, make you the top. All right? If you are at Ankwaku, they remove you, make you the top. Hallelujah, I don't know what to call it. A French man knows what to call it too. You know? This scripture tells me that of all fingers that are not equal, the one that is the most equal is the one I am. Are we together? And it says that God will want make you. He didn't say I will make myself. God will make you if I can fully obey him. He says, not the tail. If you what? Pay attention to the commands of the Lord thy God that he gives you today. Now he says, and you carefully follow me, follow them, you will what? Always, say always, always be on top. Always. Somebody can be promoted and they demote him, not you. If they promote you, you will never be demoted. It is onward, ever, downward, never. You don't leave a job of 30,000 to go and get a job of, of 20,000. That is a curse. They are paying you 65000 you are looking for a job of 50000 That is a curse. It's not in line with what God said. God said you will always be. So he first said that you will be on top and not the tail. So it means that if I'm on top of this ladder and the top of the ladder is 36000 when I leave, I will go to another ladder that will take me to 40-something or 50-something thousand. If I reach that 80-something thousand, I will go to, from another ladder to one and something thousand. You don't go from the top to the bottom because it says you will not be bottom, you will be on top. Then you will always be. That is progressively on top. I mean, anything you do will always lead to promotion. That's what God is saying. But if you follow what I'm telling you. Success is cheap for a man who does, is not full of himself. A man who knows that God is true when he promises and gives God his heart and mind. And then God will be able to demonstrate and show the world that he is your God. I don't believe when I first came to this country, people always say that, oh, you can't go too far. All of them, I left them where they are. The people I gathered to, with, together with me in CFT at that time, I told them, look, we are going far. In this country, don't worry where we are now. We are going to rule in this nation. All of them now are on top. They get to the head, to the, to the peak of their, of their careers. Directors in various organizations. Whereas we left some Christians who believe that they just have to take the crumbles. I, I understand when Jesus was, the person Jesus addressed and said, you take the crumbs that fall from the table was a Samaritan. I am not a Samaritan. I'm a Jew of a Jew. What about you? <laughs> Jesus called the, the Samaritan dog. He said, what falls from the table? And the Samaritan said, Lord, even that one that falls from the table is good for your servant. And even that one that fell from the table he, he cured that woman, all right, answered her need. Talk less you who we get from the table. You will get overflowing, overflowing, overflowing. That's what God says. Don't believe in failure. It's not your portion. A man is a slave to what he fears. Fear God completely so that there's no room in your heart for anything to be feared than the God that you fear. You honor man, but you fear God. I we together now. So this evening, let me tell you what I want to tell you. 
We will close at 9.30. It's just 9 now. Thank God that the word of faith is going out when we got to 9. Because today we deal with sin. Let me give you the story, the, what you need to know about sin. Sin can cause sickness. Sin can cause sickness. Not all sicknesses are caused by sin, but sin can cause sickness. Look at the book of John chapter 5 from verse 1. It says, sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for a feast of the Jews. Now they are in Jeru is, there is in Jerusalem near the sheep gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One of them was there, one of them, one, one, one who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in, in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Now let's follow this story. Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is still. While I'm trying to get, get in, Someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, to him, get up, pick up your pallet or your mat and walk. And then the Bible says, at once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. That's the kind of power I want. What about you? I didn't hear you. Are we following me? Let's read from there together. At once. Stop. How many minutes did it take Jesus to pray for that man? At the minute of his word. That is what you and I is aiming to become. We will get there. We must get there. Whatever it takes your body, you will give your body. Even death. Are you with me now? Soldiers don't know retreat when their commanding officer commands them. They go to die. If in the battle they come back with their life, no problem. They sign an agreement of death. So is all those who believe in Jesus. Whatever it takes your life, you give to become fully like Jesus Christ. All this pray, 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 pray over one simple headache, it should stop. It should stop. I will together now. Let's read the next verse. And so, read, 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 read like disciples. Can you imagine that? So the Jews always want the sick to die as sick. There are people like that in the world. You meet a lot of them in medical practice. Oh, yes. They are the ones who go to tell patients that you have five days to live, which is illegal, but many of them are doing it. Very, very seriously illegal. To tell a person he will die in five days, you should be prosecuted. And if anybody picks up anyone on that, you will win it. Doctors do not have, under the standard of care of their practice, they have no right to determine the death day of a man. They are not trained to do that. It is out of the boundary of duty of care. But they do it. Even I was there shortly when they said to one of them, so I took them up by law, they backed off. I'm pleaded. If you don't know what your right is, they may mess you up. They are Jews who want the sick to die. So when Jesus healed the sick, they told the sick that why should you respond to healing 
on a Sabbath day. Are we together now? My spiritual father in Nigeria, when God raised him in 1930, God used him so mightily to heal the sick. And while one day uh, in the nation, the hospitals were getting empty because doctors didn't have much work to do. Any city he enters, everything breaks down. All hospitals will empty. People will bring all their sick, dead into the, in the crusade ground. So the doctors were not getting jobs. And all the witch doctors got bankrupt anywhere he entered. That is going to begin in England shortly. It is through you God will do such. So one day in Lagos, the Nigerian Council of Medical Practitioners, together with the Council of Witchcraft Practitioners, they joined together and sued him to the court. And the police came and arrested him and put um, shackles on his hand. They took him to detention. And when the case came up, they brought him to race course, to the court, high court then. And when he got there, as uh, in those days, it was the, mag the magistrates were white, British, and the magistrate was in waiting for the case, and the black Maria came where he came down. But by the court was a man who is paralyzed, who always beg arms from the magistrate, and everybody knows him. His cross on his bum, totally paralyzed. So when Joseph Ibabalola was being led to the court, and he got to the door, and he looked at the beggar, and the beggar was stretching his hand. He said, look at me. And the beggar looked at him and said, stand up. And the beggar leapt from the ground to his feet. The, the legs grew, and he started running. And the whole, because many people who have been healed in his crusade, they, they surrounded the whole court. Race course was filled with mob of thousands of people who in their own idea, they came to protest that you cannot jail this man. At that time, one of the pastors of Christ, Christ Apostolic Church was Oba Ibi Akinyele, who was an OB as early as 1930 or something like that. And he was the first Christian king in the history of Nigeria. He decided, he asked to use his prerogative to free him because he's an OB by the queen. And he's one of the representatives in England of the queen, in Nigeria. And the man of God refused it because God had told him that he would go to prison because of two people. So the period he was detained in prison, he got those two people saved who became mighty evangelists in Nigeria. And then at the door, he, he got the cripple working. So... The magistrate came out because of the pandemonium, which is unusual with court ethics. And so he asked what's going on here. The police were shaking because they could not open the handcuffs. And so the cripple holding Babalola was saying, Master, 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 had they work, had they work. Said, What's the matter with you? He said, This man says, Stand up. And I stood up. He said, then why did you put a handcuff in the hands of a man who is doing good to the nation? And they said, oh, this is the man that is accused, sir, by the Council of Witches and Medical Practitioners in Nigeria. He said, oh, I'm interested in that case. Now let me hear the case. Can you release him, please? They released him, and he took him into the court. And in the court, the witches said, the magistrate asked, what has he done? And the witches said that he has disturbed us from doing our work. And the doctor said that this man has emptied all the hospitals that we do not have any job to do anymore. So, the magistrate asked that how? They said because he's healing the sick. And they accuse him of healing the sick without license. So, the magistrate said, if this man, by whatever means, can do the same thing you doctors cannot do. He said to the doctor, can you heal that cripple? <clears throat> the doctor said, no, sir. He asked the witch doctor, can you heal the cripple? That man outside there, just like, like that, you know, what he will do is he will say, tell them, go and bring the cripple and heal them. If they can't heal them, they contact of God, they go to jail. So they said they cannot do that. So the man said, then, you are a good team together. Now this guy can heal more than you guys can heal. So why don't you, three, three of you, form a team and go heal all the sick in the country? <laughs> and so he gave him a license 
to heal within the federal territory of Nigeria. And that took the crusade to a different level. It will happen to you too. Jesus said to the lame, stand. And the religious people said, it is forbidden to stand on the Sabbath. Can you imagine? But what ended it up? Let's just read it through. But he replied, the man, the man who made me, yeah, said to me. And then, so, and what did he say? I don't. For Jesus, can you imagine? Jesus healed the sick. He did not stay there to be saying that, look at what I have done. Look at what I have done. I will get the man. He ran. He slipped among the people so that God can be glorified. He didn't use that to flex his muscle and show people who he is. Unlike what we see today. He didn't raise an offering for it. Or from it. Now let's go further. I'll show you one thing we end it. Later, Jesus found him at what? The temple. So the man who was healed started serving God. Yeah? When, when you saw he healed this, a mad person, the Bible says the mad person sat at his feet. Hear me? When he healed people, they become disciples. I will together now. So let's read together. Later, Jesus found, uh huh. Did you see that? Sin was the cause of his sickness. That's why Jesus said to him, What? Stop sinning. And Jesus gave us a, two principles there, or two understandings. Sin caused you to do this, to be like this. But sin can give you worse things. That's why I told every one of us that we must make up our mind to do it with sin. Now we set our feet on this path. We must make sure we make up our mind to do it with sin. If you look at the next place where Jesus spoke about sin, is John chapter 8. And this is the story where they brought a the woman caught in adultery. And then they decided to stone the, man to, the woman to death. If you look at from verse, I want us to just read the end part of it. Verse 10. Okay, let's read from verse 7. Shall we together? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Look at the King James Version. Read that. Verse 11, please. Verse 11. Yes. Yes. 
So we start there. The act, attitude of sin hinders man from God. Let's start that together. That's the reason why the only prayer we pray today is just on that. We are going to pray again. The attitude of sin is a seed of Satan. When that seed is planted in man, he cannot deliver himself. He finds himself doing the same wrong thing again and again of which he regrets doing. But when a man is born again, that is supposed to stop automatically with salvation. But to many it doesn't. Because a good number of us just gave our life to Christ. It's by mercy we are saved. But our heart is far from commitment. And because of that, we still struggle with all those things. It's not so with all Christians. I think it could also, one of the things that could affect that is upbringing and association and stuff. We're going to pray together and tell God, Father, I curse the seed of sin in me to die. And the second prayer you're going to pray is that, Father, give me the power to put myself under your control. That's the power of self-control. 